Hello everybody, Gavin McCormack here and welcome. Now over the next 10 weeks, we are going to be focusing on space. During this course, the solar system and beyond from the end of the world, we are going to be sailing all the way to Antarctica and teaching you all about the solar system, the galaxies and the universe. Now we are extremely lucky because right now we're sitting on a ship called the Greg Mortimer and we're in the Drake Passage sailing towards Antarctica. Over the next 10 weeks we'll be here with Dr. Carl. Dr. Carl is a science commentator, a science writer, communicator. He's also an author. He's written 47 books. Hello Dr. Carl. Hi Dr. Gavin. Now, uh, Dr. Carl, tell us, you are a very prolific science communicator. You talk about science a lot in Australia and around the world. What got you interested in science? Well, one day I was a kid and I was uh, walking down the street and I thought, oh, look at that, nice blue sky, nice green, nice green grass. And suddenly a question popped into my head. Why is the grass green? Why isn't it blue? And why is the sky blue? Why isn't it yellow with purple polka dots? And from that I started my career in science and ended up on a complicated pathway where I ended up having 16 years of university education, which is probably longer than some of you students have been alive. And so I've got degrees in physics and mathematics, which is a really good mental toolbox to have in your head that you can use to analyse the world. Uh, master's degree in biomedical engineering, when I designed and built a machine to pick up electrical signals off the human eyeball to diagnose certain types of eye disease degrees in medicine and surgery, and then just around me off four non-degree years of university study in computer science, astrophysics, electrical engineering and philosophy. Goodness me, wow. So I get my real education by reading my way through about $10,000 worth of scientific journals every year, which is a pile maybe three metres high each year. Wow, amazing. Now we are really lucky because Dr. Carl is going to be with us for the next 10 weeks. And as you can see, he knows everything there is to know. No, no, no. Sometimes the answer to a question is, I don't know. Exactly right. And that's why you will come in because we'll be asking you lots of open-ended research questions and asking you to go out into the world and find the answers. Now, Dr. Carl, you know, there used to be nine planets in the solar system when I was a child. Now there's eight. Um, and we study them in school, we research about all these planets and the sun and how they orbit. Is there anything we're missing in the solar system that we need to focus on? Uh, a few things. One very important thing that we need to focus on are big lumps of rock that could run into the Earth. Goodness me. And in 2015, there was a rock that came past on Halloween and it was about 600 metres in diameter. And if it had hit the Earth, it would have wiped out between 10 and 80% of all humans living, depending on where it landed. Goodness me. Now, if we'd had three years warning, three years, we could have sent a rocket up, or a bunch of rockets, to nudge it off course. Yes. But we didn't have three years warning, we had three weeks. Goodness me, what do we, we call these things? Uh, they're called Earth-crossing asteroids. They're the ones that are outside the Earth's orbit, and they're fairly easy, relatively easy to find. There's the ones inside the Earth's orbit, and the trouble is you can only see those at sunrise and sunset. Think about Venus. You, 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 okay, Venus? You look over to the east just before sunrise, and you'll see a little dot in the sky, and that's Venus. And then, 12 hours later, V, you look on the other horizon to the west, and there's a little dot as the sun's going down. That's Venus also. And it was the Greeks who were the first to discover that that was the same object. We can see the ones that are on a potential collision course with us on the inside the Earth's orbit, we can see them only around sunrise and sunset. So that's one thing that we need to know about. Because of the age of our galaxy, the Milky Way, there should be about a billion black holes in our galaxy. How many have we discovered so far? A couple of dozen. A couple of dozen, yeah. 24. Yeah. And that's the power of science, you see. Over the next 10 weeks, we're going to be giving you lots of amazing facts and tidbits on all things planetary, solar system, cosmos, universe, but they might be something that you want to discover all on your own. Now, Dr. Carl, there are eight planets in our solar system, as I mentioned mm -hmm. earlier on. My favorite, personally, is Jupiter. Ah. And the reason my favorite is Jupiter is because when I was at school, my teacher told me that uh, the nickname for Jupiter is the Big Brother. It protects the rest of the solar system by attracting meteors and asteroids because its gravitational pull is so great. And I thought, wow, amazing to have a Big Brother taking care of all the other planets. 
Do you have a planet in our solar system that's your favourite and why? My favourite planet is Earth because it's got so much life. It's that little blue dot. Um, but it's just kind of sort of snooky and sentimental. But I, I do have a sneaking fondness for the big guy. <laughs> Amazing. Okay, now, this week, as a precursor and a setup for the next 10 weeks, we want you to do some research on the planets just within our solar system. So all the way from the sun, all the way out to, and I think we're going to include Pluto because we're going to talk about Pluto in week number seven. You can include Pluto in your research. Find out all the facts, draw the diagrams, color the planets, get all your research in place because over the next 10 weeks, Dr. Carl and I are going to go through everything all the way out into the furthest cosmos. Okay, off you go and we'll see you later. Thank you so much, Dr. Carl. Thank you, Dr. Gavin.